Five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts. A five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's go. Let's go. Fire fighters. <laughs> Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire. In just a minute, we'll join Chief Cody in his grim search for Polecat and Scrubby, the two hoodlums who are squaring up a fancy grievance against the fire department and especially against Tim Collins by pulling a night-long series of false alarms. But first... Here's something you'll want to hear. Let's go, firefighters. Let's go to the location of Box 115, where, as you remember, Chief Cody has just held a hasty conference with Tim Collins. A moment ago, Tim said, uh, Chief Cody, these false alarms are timed just right. How do you mean, Collins? Well, now, look, the first was tapped in from Box 112 at 12 minutes before 1 o'clock this morning. Right, I've looked at the report. Right, and since then, Chief, every 8 or 10 minutes, another false alarm. Just in time to catch us as we roll back to the fire station, or, if not, as soon as we get back to bed in the dormitory. It's criminal, Collins. Uh, bad enough, Chief, if we had an accident on one of these runs. Maybe uh, put an engine out of action or injured some men. I know, Collins. I can't think of anything worse than an accident on the way to a false alarm. Well, sir, we take that risk on any run we make, but suppose a real emergency came up. Somebody really needed us when we're answering one of these fake calls for help. It could happen, Collins. It's been known to happen. Yeah, and another thing, Chief. Hmm? I've been noticing how these alarms are planned, sir. Oh, you've noticed that, have you? Yes, sir. First, 112 box was pulled. Then 116. Way over on the other side of your district. Yes, sir. That means that somebody's traveling pretty fast from one box to another miles away. Somebody in a fast car, Colin. Uh, not much doubt who it is. I'll bet anything it's your two friends. Yeah, those hoodlums, Polecat and Scrubby. Chief, can't the police check up on them? I've got two police cars helping me patrol the district, Collins. We'll catch those rascals in the act sooner or later. Oh, but it's getting late, Chief. It's getting to be time for the sun to come up. Suppose they sneak off home. I'm going to check on their homes now, Collins going to find out if they're home in bed where we're sure they're not. And then if they do show up, somebody will be ready for it. As Chief Cody finishes his quick review of his plans, he orders Tim and Engine Company 209 back to quarters and, in his own car, sets out to follow a police guide to the home addresses of Polecat and Scrubby. Meanwhile, only a few blocks away from Box 115, from which a few minutes ago they sent in the latest in their series of vicious false alarms, Polecat and Scrubby sit in their fast car, hidden in an alley. Hey, Polecat. Now what? You getting cold again? It's too quiet. How come only one engine come to the box instead of three engines and a big hook and ladder like before? Oh, they ain't so dopey, you dope. Uh, who's a dope? They ain't. Them firemen. They're catching wise. You mean they're catching wise? It's us that's pulling them boxes? Nah, nah, nah. They're catching wise. Ain't no real fires. Not real fires, see? So they don't answer no more. But then they can't take no chance. They got to answer the box somehow. So only one engine comes. Well, that ain't right. Suppose maybe there's a real fire. So what? So the engine that comes, that one tells the other guys. And then they come. That ain't right. What ain't? Well, them guys, them firemen, they get paid for answering alarms, don't they? Uh, well, what's the idea? They only send one engine. It ain't right. Ah, the heck with it. Let's get moving, boy. We ain't through for the night yet. Hey, hold it. Somebody coming. Huh? Somebody here in the alley? Oh, listen, out in the street there, a car. Ah, that's just the engine going back till we pull another false alarm. Oh, listen. Hey, cops, a proud car. Boy. And another one. Hey, where are they going, Polecat, all them cops? That wasn't no prowl car, that second one. That was a fire department. That was a battalion chief or something. Ah, uh, what are we going to do? Pull another alarm. What do you think? Well, all them cops and stuff, though. Ah, the heck with him, Scrubby. They won't never catch us. Well, you keep your lights out like we've been doing. They won't never catch us, I said. Not the way I know these alleys. Listen, I can drive around all night, and nobody ain't never even going to know we're there. Okay, Polecat, if you say so. Let's find us another box. And half an hour later, as the weary firemen, exhausted and raging from a succession of runs to imaginary fires, return again to the quarters of Engine 209. Okay, Gonagal, back her in. 
Uh, All right, boys, get some sleep if you can. Oh, I'm going to stay here on the sidewalk, Lieutenant, get some air. All right with you? Okay, Collins, don't get lost. I won't get lost, sir. (laughs) Just get some air. Try to keep myself awake, huh? Hey, what's that coming, Hooksy? Uh-oh, police car, I guess. Okay, I'll be in my office. All right. Uh, oh, Collins. Uh, oh, Chief Cody. I thought it was the police again. Uh, you, you want me to call the lieutenant, Chief? No, no, let him get some rest if he can. Now, come over here to the car. Yes, sir. We've had two more false alarms, Chief, since you picked us up at Box 115. Good, that's great. Oh, now, wait a minute, Chief. Which side are you on? Collins. You said yourself there's a plan to the way these fellows work. Well, yes, yes, I did, but... First was the false alarm from box 112. Then 116, way across the district. Then a box nearby, and the next way over the other side again. Now only two boxes in the district haven't been called. 119 and 114. Well, then if you can figure which box they'll pull next... I'll be there to meet them. Collins, where was the last call? From a box nearby or far away? Box 119, right down the street here. Only one box is left. Mm Mm-hmm. Then box 114 is next, and that's where I'm going. Ah, Well, good luck, Chief. Good hunting. I'll bring you their scalps. This time, those rats are done for. Here we go, Scrubby. This is the last one. Can't we stay in the alleys till we get near the alarm box? Not this time, but who cares? We got the speed, ain't we? Them cops has been zigging and zagging all over. We see a prowl car, we just duck. After this box, we duck anyway. Out of town, huh, Paul? Can't, like you said, we go somewhere till they forget about it? Yeah. There's the street. Hang on, we're gonna take off. Paul, can't, like you said, we're gonna leave town, huh? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, till they forget. (laughs) Only they ain't never gonna forget what we done to them tonight. Creeps, they've been rushing them engines around for three hours. Never no sleep or nothing, not tonight. Some fun, that's scrubby. No, we ain't never had no more fun. I'll say. Not even maybe the time we stole your old lady's canary. <laughs> and Kimpty down at the pool room would give us a box of cigars for it. Yeah, and your old woman we told her must have flew out the window and got run over. <laughs> Chief, remember how the old woman hollered and cried? Yeah, how we laughed like we had to die after we got out of the house. Some fun, huh? I'll say. I can hear the old woman screeching, yet just remember yeah, it. Yeah, so can I. Hey. Well, we coming to the firebox? Yeah, yeah, the next corner, but then. Huh? Hey. Something is screeching. Something's coming up behind us. Hey, that's a siren. It's a cop. Yeah, I think it... No, I said, I don't want to fire chief, or what is it? Hey, Polkat, give it a gun. Get me out of there. Hang on, Scrubby. Going to swing wide. We got the firebox. See, we swing wide the corner. Suit straight down the alley instead of the street. Well, step on it. He's right behind. Step on it, Polkat. Great blazing blisters. They hit the truck. Stop here, Vito. That car is burning. Okay, sir. Leave the alleyway clear, Vito. Don't drive down there. Go tap in an alarm. When 209 gets here, send them straight down the alley to the fire. Okay, sir. I'll take our own extinguisher here. Get those men out of that bonfire if there's a chance in a million. Anybody alive in there? Cover your face. Don't breathe that flame. Uh, hey, hey. I'm hey. coming in for you. Hey. As soon as I wash the fire hey. out from that door. Extinguisher right here. Oh, I, I, it hurts, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts. You bet it hurts. It's a wonder you're alive, mister. Here, I'll, I'll drag you clear. I, I didn't do nothing. Lie still. Don't try to move. You're safe here till the ambulance comes and the police. I didn't do nothing with him, thought of it. With him, false alarms, not me. Him? The other yeah. one? Yeah. Where is he? He's not in that blazing wreck. He was flying clear when we hit He was thrown out of the car? Yeah. Uh. Speak up, man. Hey, don't, don't let him get away. Scrubby done it. Scrubby done it all. Oh, there they come. Hey. Bring that extinguisher. Knock down that fire before it spreads to those wooden fences. Hey, there's a man lying here. Well, never mind him. Knock down that fire. Collins. Yes, sir. Uh, drag that man out of the way. Okay, Chief. All right, men, that fire is licked. Come over here, all of you. Come on, boys. All right, here they are. The men who've been pulling those false alarms all night. A couple of tough guys who thought they were too smart to follow the simple rules of decency and safety. Well, what do you think of them? Chief Cody. Yes, Collins? Well, Chief, their car is wrecked, their bodies are wrecked, and when they get out of the hospital, they'll go right into jail. Well, boy? And Chief Cody, it's tough, but when you ask for trouble, you're bound to get it. And it looks as if these men got just what they asked for. They certainly are. Yes, yes, exactly what they asked for. 
And sooner or later, people who ask for trouble get what they want, like Polecat and Scrubby, soon to go to jail for their wretched defiance of the safe driving campaign and criminal prank of pulling false alarms. As for Chief Cody and Tim Collins, new adventures await them, as you'll hear in our next True to Life episode of The Firefighters. In just a moment, Chief Bob Cody will tell you, boys and girls, how you can help the firefighters in your own hometown. But first, here's the message you ought to hear. And now, Chief Bob Cody with a special notice for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. This is your friend, Chief Cody, with some tips you might like to know about firefighting. For instance, you may not know that we think of fires as coming in three separate classes. Class A is a fire in wood or paper or any other ordinary kind of material that burns easily. And a Class A fire can usually be controlled by cooling it down, lowering the temperature with water or some kinds of extinguisher spray. Soon I'll tell you about the other kinds of fire. But that's all for now. You'll hear from me soon. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's roll! Let's go! Firefighters! Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.